Hi, my name is Maria Anderson. I'm from Muskegon Community College, and I'm here to talk to you about the best of the educational technology freebies. Now, before we begin, I should just say that usually at Omatic presentations, we are not allowed to promote commercial products. But I do have special permission at this presentation to talk about these commercial products because they are all, in fact, free to use. I also want to make it absolutely clear that I am not in any way getting paid to plug any of these programs to you. They are all free. I use them all free. Also, there's no internet at this presentation, and so I've had to pre-record a video of some of the things I'd like to show you, because many of the applications I'm going to show you are web-based. So what you'll see in the background is a pre-recorded video as I talk you through the applications. Okay, so the first program I want to talk about, and hopefully you can see this all oh, reasonably well. Those of you in back might want to scoot up still, I think, but um, the first program is Wolfram Alpha. And if you haven't seen this program yet, it's really, truly amazing. It runs on the internet. It's free. It launched May 15th of this year. What you're seeing here is me testing the program. It takes common language input. So for example, I typed in line between 2, 7, and 3, 1 half. And it's plotted that line so we can see what that line looks like. It found the x and y intercept of the line. Um, it wrote the equation for the line, gave you the slope of the line, and found the distance between those two points of the line. You didn't have to tell it to find those things. You just had to tell it that you wanted the line with those two points on it. Okay? Here's another example. We're going to do an equation here. We're going to solve the square root of 3x minus 4 equals 5. So we just type that in. It would also work, by the way, if you wrote out square root in words. So there is the uh, solution numerically. And it actually plots both sides of the equation. So the line at y equals 5 and then the other graph. And here's the real kicker. If you click on Show Steps here, there's all the steps to solve that equation. Okay. If you haven't seen this before, this might be a little shocking. Did I mention it's free on the internet and anyone can use it? Okay, so we're going to go into another problem here. And we're going to look at um, a rational expression. 2x squared minus 2 divided by x squared minus 2x minus 8. Okay, Something we might look at in a pre-calculus class. I'm trying to show you some examples from different levels here. So we didn't tell it to do anything with that expression. right? We just gave it the expression. So here's what we get out. We get a plot of what that would look like if we interpret it as a function, so as a y equals that expression. We get alternate forms for that, so the partial fractions form, the various factored forms. I heard an oh my goodness, right? This is kind of amazing, right? Um, it then goes into some, it finds the roots of that, it goes into some calculus series expansions, it calculates the derivative, it calculates the indefinite integral, it does a limit um, for the end behavior as you approach infinity and negative infinity. And you can actually, if you don't like the way it plotted, if you click on the graph, it will give you the Mathematica code, which is essentially what's running in the background here. And you can paste that code in and just alter the window. Once the code is there, it's fairly easy to determine what the graphing window part is. So you can change that graphing window to be whatever you'd like. And just replot it, and you'll get uh, the plot that you desired. So that code is not something you have to learn yourself. You can just click on the graphs and get the code from that. So anything you get a graph for, you can do that with. And then we've got a nice, uh, nice picture there. Okay. So let's look at, I think, another example. Uh, let's, let's take down trigonometry next. Okay. Uh, so triangle with sides 5, 8, and 9. I just wrote triangle 5, 8, 9. It's going to draw me a graph of that. Tell me it's acute, how many vertices, how many edges, its area, its perimeter, all of the angles all of the angles. You know that whole thing we do with solving triangles? I know how I want to solve triangles now. You can also plot multiple functions. So um, if I want to graph, uh, do some stuff with graph transformations and show um, how a graph moves, I did 2 to the x and 2 to the x minus 3 here. And so you see it does it in different colors. 2 to the x is in blue. and. Uh, 2 to the x minus 3. You notice it rearranges sometimes the expressions as it puts it in. And that is an interesting time to talk with students about you know, why is that being rearranged. And then it does all sorts of interesting things. Basically what Wolfram Alpha does is you give it a mathematical function. 
and it finds everything it can do with it and tells you all those things. So we're used to computer programs where we tell the program exactly what we want. You don't have to do that here. As a matter of fact, the more you tell it, the less likely you are to get results. This is an example from my Math for Elementary teachers class. We explored Babylonian numbers by typing them into Wolfram Alpha. I didn't tell them it was base 60. Just went through um, and tried different numbers. And they looked at the various forms in Babylonian and tried to figure out what the patterns were and then made predictions on those patterns. And then we put in higher numbers until their pattern essentially failed after, after we got through 60. And they had to figure out what was happening then. Um, so it's essentially giving us an inquiry-based learning method. Okay. Um, here's an implicit derivative, something from calculus, or uh, implicit, it's eventually going to be the derivative. But this is a, an implicit function to graph, and these are Im almost impossible to graph on a lot of our graphing calculators. So it's always been difficult to talk about them in words without using something like Maple or Mathematica to graph them. Well, there's the graph, right there. And now when I find the derivative and find the tangent line at a point, I can put that up against the graph, and we can see that it's right. And so any implicit function we can come up with, we can graph. And we didn't need to know any complicated language to do it. You notice there it finds the implicit derivative, dy dx and dx dy. And it finds the implicit second derivative. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have done these problems in a while, but let me tell you, finding the second derivative on these problems is kind of heinous. Here's a limit problem from calculus. Um, to do limit, you can either say limit as in words, x approaches 3, that works. Or you can just use a dash and a, a greater than sign make a little arrow. And it's going to show you again um, some intermediate steps for how to solve it. In this case, it, it didn't really have any, so I'm going to pick a more complicated problem to look at, one with an absolute value in it. And here's what the graph is going to look like. And this graph is actually going to demonstrate one thing that's a little bit tough about using Wolfram Alpha right now, which is that every once in a while you come up with something that's a bit buggy. Not there, but there. Can you see what's buggy about that? Yeah. Should be what kind of points? open. So this is what you have to know about Wolfram Alpha. When you put feedback in this window right here, all you have to do is type your feedback. Once you have to give it your information, after that it will remember you. Okay? They get about 200 feedbacks a day, and usually they get incorporated to, into the next build of Wolfram Alpha, which happens every Tuesday. So if there's anything it doesn't do that you want it to do, and you think it really should, you tell them in the feedback. And you, then you might get a little email the next day or two that says, Oh, this will be in the next build. So just know that that means the next Tuesday. This is software that adapts every week. Here's another thing we can do. I, I looked at the weather in Muskegon and the weather in Las Vegas, and it gave me a bunch of different conditions here, and I thought this was so cool. A graph showing me Muskegon versus Las Vegas, the predictions for the next couple days. It's much easier to kind of gauge your weather based on what you know you're experiencing than you have to just do it off right off the graph. And any two things that you put a comma between, it automatically does a comparison. So you can compare cities, you can compare units, you can compare functions. Anything you want a comparison, just put a comma between them. So there's that tool from Alpha. That's number one. Okay. Number two is Jing. And Jing, if you haven't used it yet, is fantastic. Okay. And we're going to actually use Jing with Wolfram Alpha here in a second. Jing is free. It works on Macs and PCs. It requires a download. You can install it on all of your campus computers. That little icon there that you see me kind of pulling off the screen, that's the Jing icon. It's the sun. Okay? And it's got three buttons. That's the capture button right there. And that's the history button to see all your previous captures. And that last button is where all the settings are found. So if you want to change a setting, you do it there. So I was uh, writing a calculus test, and I needed that graph of that implicit, um, that implicit function. So I went back to Wolfram Alpha, and I just used this little capture button. And you just click and drag over what you want to capture, just like that. Let go. And it'll create, essentially, a picture of that little piece of the screen. And you say, I want an image. Or, um, and then you, you decide if you want to send it to the internet, save it, or copy it. In this case, I just chose copy, because all I want to do is paste it. I don't need to save the image for the future. So I'm going to go to my test now and hit Control-V, or right-click and hit Paste. And bingo. There's the graph you wanted on your test. Okay. Here's another way I've used Jing recently. Um, my math for elementary teachers have to build mind maps of the concepts they're learning in class. And then I have to grade those mind maps, which is actually fairly difficult. I didn't quite think through all the implications of having them build this. 
But one of the things that I can do pretty easily is take screenshots or videos. And so here I'm going to take, I just took a, a screenshot of this, and I'm pointing to his misspelling in that. And when I'm done with this, instead of copying it, what I'm going to do is send it to the internet. And it will make a link for it, and then the email I send to Scott, who's a student in this, this here, um, I'll just send him the hyperlink. Okay, so we're not going to transfer any files. I'm not going to paste this into a document. Just watch my mouse here. That first button uploads it to the internet very quickly. It says it's been sent, and the link is ready to be pasted. So now I'm going to go to uh, my email here, and say see screenshot, and just paste that link, and send it to Scott. When Scott clicks on that link, here's what he'll see. He'll pull it right down from the internet and see the annotations I made. So again, no transferring of files. So no worrying about viruses, uh, nothing like that. Okay, here's another example I want to show you. Um, I'm going to uh, make a video here to show you just the complexity that's involved in some of these maps. I'll show you, I'll tell you how to make the maps in a little bit. Okay. And so I'm going to use Jing to make a video. You can make videos of up to five minutes in length. And so now I'm making a video of everything that you see in that box. It can record what you're saying, or you can turn the mic off. So you can do it either way. And so you'll see me just click through briefly a few things. And then I'll hit stop here in a second. Oh, I thought I'd better demonstrate here. I'll just do this now. You can zoom in and out on these maps very easily. Well, I recorded a longer video than I thought. Oh, and so that you can also see here that you've, they have a lot of notes on these maps. Um, and now I'm going to stop this video. So this is a 46 second video. I stop it, it gives it a second to process. And so now it's going to show me the result. And I can kick, click on play and see my video. I can save it with its own file name. I can upload it to the internet. Or I can save it to my desktop. And if you save videos to your desktop, it saves as a flash file. So there's the video, and I'm going to load it to the internet. There it goes. You'll see it uploading at the top of the screen there. And when it's done, it'll tell me that uh, the upload is done and it'll paste the contents of the clip on my clipboard. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you that really this works. There's the link that was on my clipboard. And I'm going to go to that site. If you haven't thought through the implications of this, my students can do this too. So they can record their own videos to turn in. And they don't have to send me big files, they just have to send me the link. And I can put all those links on a, on a discussion board or a website, and they can see each other's presentations. So if you teach an online class and you want your students to present to each other, you can do it with this. Also, rock band mics tend to work just fine with computers. So if they don't have a mic and they need one, tell them to try their rock band game. Here is actually a video recorded by a student. She was having trouble figuring out why this wouldn't work. Well, obviously, I forgot to put in the link, and she was trying to explain that to me, and I was dense and didn't get it. So she made a little video to show me and just sent me the link. That's really powerful. Here's another um, student video right here. This is from our site we put up recently called How to Study for a Math Test. And this student did his presentation. Um, and you can't hear his audio, but it's there. He did his presentation with Jing. So that was number two. Now on to number three. Okay, Mindomo is the mind mapping software I just showed you. Okay. And I want to just walk you through some various student projects. These are all student work, not mine. Okay. So all, they, they all make it available on the internet, so you can actually go see their projects. Um, you can actually click to open up and close all of the levels with that um, functionality in the right-hand corner. And in the lower right-hand corner, you can zoom in and out. You can also click to move. You just pick up the screen and move it left to right. Just pick up anywhere where there's not any text. So what we're doing as an assignment is they have to take turns. Each, each uh, unit, a different group of people, does mind mapping. And they have to map out the unit we're learning. 
So all the different topics in it, some notes on those topics, and then they have to go to the resource, go to the internet, and find their own resources to link to. So games they might find on the topic, or lesson plans on that topic, or help tutorials. So this is an example of a link that one of the students added on their map. And here's another one. Uh, that was a Yahoo link of some kind. And some of them will now start including um, Wolfram links, direct links to Wolfram Alpha. Like if they want to show a particular graph or something that's difficult to write mathematically, they go and do it in Wolfram Alpha and then just include the hyperlink. And it, it opens up the same thing they saw. Okay. So here's another mind map by another student. And I think I want to show you this one because she's got some really cool use of color in here if we dive down far enough in here. And let's see. So she's got you know, her notes in there, um, some lined up stuff for showing algorithms. And I'm looking. You can tell I'm trying to find this color thing I wanted to show you. Oh, here it is. Base 10. So she did base 10 in color so she could show all the different uh, words that go with the place values, which I thought was very clever. I didn't, teach her I didn't teach them how to do any of this stuff. I just showed them how to use the mind mapping tool. After that, they figured out on their own how to say things they wanted to say. So here's a third example of student work with this. And again, I just want to show you that they could follow the, all of those little icons go to links. The students put those links in, so whatever they find um, to go to. So that tool right there is also free to use. Um, for up to seven maps. So they can have seven maps and after that they have to decide whether they're either going to delete an old map or, or pay for a premium copy of this. But um, for most students, they only ever make one or two maps. But it's a really nice way to, to study and I'll just give you a little an antidote here. Um, one of my students was really hesitant to do this and he did just a really great map for the unit. He got the highest grade on the test and he said to me, I think I'm going to use these for the next test even though I don't have to. Because he was just so pleased. And he made this map that was just incredibly detailed. Just to show you how detailed some of these maps get, this is one of my maps. It's a map that you can get to off my website. And that's about internet resources to use in the math classroom. Okay? So you can go explore this map on your own uh, later. It's got a collection of YouTube videos, collections of interactive materials, collections of open source materials, free programs that you can use on the internet. All sorts of stuff. This program is called Mindomo. This map is called Using the Internet to Spice Up Your Math Class. And I will show you at the end of the presentation how to um, find that map on my website. Actually, this map is in that collection of links that I gave you at the beginning of the presentation. And I will pull that back up at the end for those who came in late. Uh, here's an example of something off that map. Uh, this is Calculus Rhapsody. Anyone seen this lately? It is funny, um, <laughs> uh, but there's a whole bunch of other funny YouTube videos in there. And to add a new link, I just decided to add Calculus Rhapsody. I'm just showing you how to do it. You just click on hyperlink, you paste the link, in, and you click add, and then the link is there. It's really easy to use. So there it is, all done. Okay. I'm also going to show you, I think, if I remember correctly, how to add notes onto this presentation. Um, so I'm going to go to something that I know I need to add a note on, like Science Friday here. Because people always think, Science Friday, that's not video. That's what? Who listens to Science Friday? It's not video, is it? It's audio. Except that it turns out that Science Friday actually has a great collection of video on their website. But who knew, right? So I think maybe I ought to um, add a note here that says, believe it or not, Science Friday does really have video. They also have links to all of their archives of audio the last, I think, four years. So you can go to Science Friday and get free stuff and, uh, and link to it directly from your classes. And they have a whole section on math in their topics list. So that's really cool. But that's how you add a note. That isn't hard either. And you save your map before you're done. That was number three. Now we go to four and five. Two sites, NetVibes and Google Sites, both completely free. I use both of these to build websites for my classes. This is a website for my Math for Elementary Teachers class. And what you can see on here, these are all student blogs and student projects. I put them all in the same place so that they can see their projects as they get built. Um, 
you can see the videos running right inside of here. So this is a video built with a piece of software called Animoto. And you can get a free version of Animoto, and they actually give out free educator accounts for six months if you want to try it um, with unlimited video creation. So this student has basically made a set of slides, and then it builds the rest of the presentation, sets it to music, does all the transitions, etc. So a lot of them have been experimenting with that. They have, of course, built a bunch of mind maps. So some of them blog, some of them mind map. Um, some of them are building Prezi presentations. They, they, they have a choice of four projects, and one of them is to do a digital presentation. Prezi is also free, by the way. Um, so this is a Prezi presentation on addition and subtraction properties. And I'm just kind of clicking through the presentation. I don't mean for you to read all of this, but just to give you an idea of what kind of a presentation tool it is. So this is all done by a student. All of the images she's borrowed are cited at the end of the presentation under Creative Commons copyright. If it is, and you're doing anything digitally, you have a website or anything, you should probably look it up. So that's what the presentation looks like when you back away from it. It's a collection of objects, and you make a path through those objects. And, uh, and then it follows the path as you click through the presentation. It's kind of a fun way to do it. We're very different than PowerPoint. And then, of course, there are lots of maps. And the important thing is, if you this is a NetVibes page. So if you use NetVibes, the one important thing to know is that when you open up those things, you need to right click and open them in a new window. Because if you just left click, it tries to open them inside of those panes. So you'll see here I always open them in a new tab or a new window. This next thing I'm going to show you is another student project. This is a cartoon that one of the students built with a site called Pixton, which is also free. I have no idea what number we're on now, by the way. Um, and so she wanted to talk about, she wanted to learn about the history of Xerox. So she built a cartoon that was not only funny, but also delivered some of the content about the history of Xerox. This is one of the blogs from students, and you can see they're putting in images and links to things, um, talking about a variety of different forms of stuff. It's interesting because the blogs have become kind of a, a set of notes for the class. They're like the reporters for the classroom. So students who blog for every unit, they go home and they write blog posts about what they did in class. So the other weekend, I was away at a conference, and I had a sub. So the next day, I went on and I looked at all their blogs, and I saw exactly what they'd done in class and what they liked and what they learned. And um, I, it was like I was there, only I wasn't there. <laughs> I had no recollection of teaching the class, but class went on without me. So I have given you the link to this site. You can explore it. These are all pu in the public domain. Um, this is the landing page for this site. And what I've got on here are uh, blogs that I thought would be of interest to these students. In particular, that one right there I'm pointing to is the MathDL, Math in the News website, um, put out by the MAA. And they have great articles about math that's going on in the news. And my students have been blogging about some of these as they find them and they think they're pertinent um, because they see them because they're available right there to them on that page they land on. I've also got a couple blogs for, um, el from elementary teachers who do a lot of stuff on math. And then this one, I'm not sure. same thing.